So the idea of this session is for you to bring your questions to me uh, and, and, and uh, the burning questions, the challenges that you've been having so far with your observability journey and uh, see if I can help you out with some of those, right? So to set, uh, to also to understand who I am talking to, I would like to get a sense of the audience. So if you could, uh, my lovely audience, uh, just give me a brief of, um, you know, where you're from or what your role is. You don't have to me necessarily mention the company, but your role, um, either you're an SRE engineer or a DevOps engineer or manager, um, just just give me a sense of uh, what your role is. Uh, and we have some poll questions also uh, that we will put out uh, in a moment. So they are also to get an idea of uh, what your... Um, what, what you are. So uh, maybe we'll start with the uh, first question. Um, if we can put the first poll question and also in the meantime, introduce yourself in the chat, um, you know, what, what your role is. So let's see. Uh, yeah, so the first question is, what are your top five KPIs that you're measured on in your role? And um, Giving me the, the the role also helps identify what it is. Um, token company or crazy event. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Um, yeah, so this is just to get a sense of you know where you're from, what your background is. You might be developers. I'm not quite sure. So you don't don't be shy. Just to clarify, we're popping that into uh, into chat. Uh, yeah, the, the role, yes. The role description into chat and also answer the polls. The poll is just to get a sense of what are the, the important things. You know, when, when I talk about KPIs, these are the ones that you are evaluated on, right? So meeting those KPIs uh, in your organization is critical for you because, you know, that's, okay. that's how you get your raise and bonuses. So, so that tells me what uh, is important to you. Okay, so Amanda, I'm just asking a question. Are you running the poll that Madura is yeah. talking about? Yes, I can see the answers, yes. Yep, cool. we are. We don't get to see it. Yeah, I can <laughs> see it. I can see it. No worries. <laughs> right, uh, so I'm getting, uh, I'll read some of them. Uh, ESG productivity, uh, revenue, GP, reliability, responsiveness, uh, opportunities identified, uh, throughput, energy, cost, response time. So more, more from the infrastructure um, uh, or the SRE role. I think that's from, from that was from Sam. Uh, revenue uh, and reliability from Jamie. Uh, I think you're more on the uh, manager level, I guess. So then we have uh, Lang saying SRE with a development background. Don't have specific KPIs, but expect to keep the dev team productive. And the service is reliable. Um, we have four key metrics, DORA metrics mainly, right? Uh, resource utilization, measuring service uptimes, right? Cool. Um, let's see what's in the chat. Uh, site reliability engineer. Um, and then we have. Um, Okay, in Australia, then we have uh, observability, working as an observability engineer. All right, cool. Uh, lead consultant, platform engineer, DevOps consultant, uh, SRE, recently moved to OBS, doing some R&D. Okay, cool, cool. Um, uh, DevOps engineer, focusing on resiliency okay cool so we have a quite a lot of sre uh, slash devops engineers or at least you know engineers or consultants um, different ranks in that space that's the the, uh, the ideal audience cool all good thank you very much for your feedback um, checking the poll um, responses again on the kpis um, so s most of your KPIs are around uptime, reliability, uh, responsiveness, 
right? And some of you are focusing on the more granular ones, like you know throughput, uh, CPU usage, and so on, right? So, so these are mostly what what I get, right? So, how do we ensure? Um, the next question is, how do we ensure uptime? How do we ensure um, the application's response times are with the SLAs that the company expects? Now, the, based on the organization that you work for, you might be responsible for the SLAs for internal users or, or departments or internal customers within your organization. Or if you're offering services externally, they might be external customers to the business. So either way, um, you, you are responsible for the overall uh, application performance, but in, in the latter part, on, on, on the latter use case, uh, that also converts to the revenue that the company generates, right? If you are selling services to outside entities, then the SLA degradation also means a um, you know uh, impact on the revenue. So that has a, a higher significance than the former. So... Um, if we go into the second poll now, um, uh, if I if I get to um, oh, maybe we'll skip the second question. Uh, can can you skip the second question and go to the third one? Uh, what are the top challenges? So we, we'll straight away go into the challenges. Um, so can you let me know the top three challenges uh, that you're facing with meeting those KPIs that you mentioned? So these are, you know, this is your time to throw out the questions, you know, what, what are the challenges that you're having with observability? You know, um, you, you maybe you have some tools already uh, with observability. Some of them might be open source. Some of them might be, you know, certain vendors, um, APM vendors or network performance monitoring vendors, um, the likes of those. But what are, what are the challenges that you're having? What do you want me to talk about? Because today is all about, you guys, right? So if you have questions, uh, dish them out to me, and I want to know what what are the ones that are most important to you. So there are, just checking the chat as well to see if there are any questions. We also have a separate question um, box, I think on your side. So the chat is just for general interaction. If you have specific questions for me, around observability, you can put them into the question section. I hope you can see a, those two separate, right? So we have, okay. So Mahesh says, having metrics traced and logged in a single place with correlation among them. Very good. Thank you very much for that answer. Right. So having them disparate in separate systems and not having a correlation between them is challenging. Let me say it's a business case for investment approach in hybrid multi-cloud environment, single plane of glass. Okay, cool. So you have a hybrid environment, um, a multi-cloud environment. So each cloud vendor have their own observability slash monitoring tool. Um, some of them offer it free, some of them offer it at a charge, but then it, it only focuses on the services that they provide, right? So how do you manage it across uh, the clouds? And also if you have certain on-prem workloads, how do you have a single pane of glass? Good question. Oh, good. Uh, or I wouldn't say a good problem to have, but um, good point. Uh, Amit says, diverse set of platform technologies coming up with SLAs for each of them, answering the question, is my platform healthy? Right. Okay. Um, Lang says, code changes causing partial outages, keeping CSCD times low for devs. Bug feedback to the teams that is ad hoc. Okay, cool. Right. Keep them coming. Um, I will check back on this um, and uh, and I will, yeah, I'm not seeing many coming through, but keep them coming uh, on the poll questions and I will constantly check. And please, uh, Stephen and Amanda, remind me if there are any questions uh, in the chat or question section um, that I need to focus on. Right. So. If I show you something, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, you know, bore you death to uh, by PowerPoint. I just, just have one slide to share with you, and I will start with that. And 
Okay. So let's take, for example, an application of, now I, I've said what happens during an application outage. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be an outage. It can be any problem. It can be a performance degradation. It can be an outage. Uh, in, it can be any kind of application issue that would impact the SLAs or the responsibility uh, falls on your lap, right? So this is an incident if we put it in that way. So go back in time. Now in your, in your current role or even in the previous uh, companies that you work for, think of the worst application outage or performance incident that, you, that comes to memory and break that down into these sections, right? So I'll explain what this means. So this first timeline here is when something actually went wrong in the application stack. So in your application, you know, it might be microservices based, it might be uh, you know, layered application architecture like the SOA, or it might be a, a, you know, a, a, a monolith. Regardless of what it is, something goes wrong somewhere, and that's when this, uh, this, this, you know, this the, you know, dashed line indicating when something does go wrong. And from that time to when you notice is the mean time to detection. Right, so you might be using certain monitoring tools to let you know when something does go wrong, or you have an alert pop up in one of your um, uh, tooling, uh, or maybe you have get a Slack alert or something. You get to know at this point in time. So the time between that something actually happening and the time that you knowing about it is the mean time to detection, and then you have mean time to identification. Right, that's the time between you getting to know about it and you figuring out what the root cause is. So the root cause might be, you know, a network related latency, if it's a latency issue, um, you know, maybe there's a service outage, maybe um, because of a power outage, or maybe uh, a service is hanging because of a memory leak or memory issue, or the um, a garbage clearance issue. So whatever the issue is, you don't know yet when you detect it, but there's a time between detection and you identifying the root cause that is the time to identification. Well, the off root cause part is missing. That's why we call it uh, MTTI. And then we have the time between detection and service back healthy. That is the mean time to restore service, right? So, out of these ones, where I mean, most of the time, I, uh, uh, in my experience, the longest duration is within this, right? So, after you get to know what the root cause is, um, resolving the issue or finding um, some sort of a mitigation strategy, uh, you know, bring up a system or bring up your backup system or, you know, um, bring up your DR. Uh, those kind of things are remedial action, not exactly fixing the root cause. But whatever you do, you can bring up the service back online pretty soon after you figure out what was wrong, right? So that part. Uh, here towards the end and the initial mean time to detection is fairly less and uh, the mean time to identification is the the bigger chunk um, i hope you agree with me um, from my side there we go so we have a question saying think of the worst application outage or production issue you've ever, ever experienced and how long did it take for you to recover and so this is to from it being detected to being down and for it to I'm up to business as usual. Let's see what, oh, okay. We have under six hours. We have more than a week. How many? Oh, two votes, more than a week. Wow, I don't want to be in that seat. We have good ones under one hour. That's, that's awesome. Uh, under a day, right. So the majority of votes say it's under six hours, right? But we have the next um, it's under a day, and also there's two votes saying, saying more than a week, right? Ouch. So think of if this is your your external servicing kind of a application, right? So think of a bank, and this was your mobile application. So that is the interface with the customer, and this is significant, right? So you you're starting to bleed. Your business is starting to lose revenue because of this. So it is. Do you agree that it is crucial? that we shorten the mean time to identification as much as possible, right? So that's where we try to address the, um, you know, uh, or, or, or try to address where the longest time is consumed, right? 
So we need some sort of a, a monitoring tool or observability tool where we get to the root cause as far, fast as possible, right? So uh, look at the, right, in your experience, so we go into the next poll, in your experience, what time percentage would it would the mean time to identification be out of the total time that we we consider from something going wrong to bringing it back to normal and out of that what percentage would mean time to identification be in your experience so okay majority vote B. Majority says seventy to eighty percent. Oh, it's, it's uh, okay. Majority says fifty to seventy percent now. Uh, nine people have answered. Okay, majority still fifty to seventy. Right. So, so we we all agree that mean time to identification is the biggest chunk of time. So that's where most of the effort is spent, and that is somewhere in between fifty to seventy percent. Right. So, what can we do? To reduce this, and one of the one of the question, one of the answers in one of the one of the polls that we we, we did was we asked you, um, you know, what what are the issues or what are the challenges that you're having, right? And someone said, having metrics traces logs in a single place and having correlation among them, it is the biggest challenge that you're having, right? Be the reason for that being traditional approaches to monitoring is you segregate the data, right? You have a log aggregation tool, you know, the likes of Splunk or you have uh, Humio or Elastic or whatnot. And that's where all of your logs reside, right? Then you have some sort of a monitoring uh, solution that, um, you know, gives the pulse of the application that might be Prometheus and Grafana mix. Or you know, I, I can go and on, on and on with the the list of uh, vendors who offer the, the the metrics, right? So the metrics tell you, you know, something is not right. Um, so it tells it gives you a signal saying, okay, your latency is high, or let's say your call the number of calls has dropped, or if something does go wrong, if your CPU is high or memory utilization is high, it will give you a signal. But that itself is not the root cause or it can be the root cause if you identify as and when it happened but it might not be the one that is impacting your overall business application right and your logs whilst it would give you the root cause because the log describes what's going on in there but how many logs do you have right so think of a, a business application i'm just going to show you one slide um, to put in perspective of what you guys are looking at, right? So if you look at this diagram here, this is, if you believe it or not, this is the, a, an actual depiction of the number of microservices that Netflix has. This is Netflix's streaming application or their platform. And each of these dots represent a microservice. And you know, it being blue, green, or red, you know, represents the health of that particular service. And the black stuff that you see, the wires between them, are the interdependencies. Now think of a chaotic situation. Where would you even start to shift through the logs? Which log do you start with? So let, let's say you have the metrics, you have the, the logs. Um, you don't know where to start. And even if you have uh, the traces, how would you put it together, put it into one picture, right? That's the challenge, right? So there are very few tools out there that will allow you to do it and allow you to do it efficiently. Uh, most of the time, most of the APMs that are out there will do a um, mediocre job of, of stitching it together, but you have to go through a lot of um, manual steps to, first of all, set it up, uh, set up the backend, or if it's a SaaS service, don't worry about it, but you have to go through a lot of configuration on the agent side to get it to work. And once the data comes back, you had to massage the data a lot. You had to build some of the dashboards by yourself and some of the tools don't come with dashboards, uh, out of the box dashboards at all. So you had to build everything on your own. But what if 
what if, right? Wouldn't it be nice if you can get track your service dependency in real time like this, right? Wouldn't it be nice that, you know, you define a business service and you have all of your, your microservices, your application tiers, um, you know, having a real time view of what its health is and what their dependency between them is, right? And when you click on one of the services that are in, you know, turning up in red, you get to see its health metrics. Uh, you know, what's its uh, erroneous call rate, what its latency, and what is the call drop. Now, this immediately tells us that there's a spike in latency, spike in the erroneous calls, and a drop in total number of calls, right? So those those are the golden signals in, in, in observability, right? So what if there's a tool that, that generates this in real time? And what if when you click on that, it takes you to that microservice or whatever the application component within the overall business uh, application and gives you a view where you get your golden signals and you get to see all of it in uh, a granular detail uh, whenever you want to see it, right? So you get to see there are you know, three issues that are reported with this uh, service and you get to see the total number of calls, the error rate and latency. And also, since this is a microservice, it also shows you the um, API endpoints that interacts with and what it, it just goes a level further, right? Not just the service itself. What is the latency across the API uh, endpoints? Is it is it just one API endpoint that is suffering or is, is everything suffering, right? And then what if you could see the dependencies across the layer? So that question was, how do we connect the dots, right? How do we connect all the, the logs and the metrics and the traces? So here we see we have the discount service and we get to see it from an application perspective. So what are the, the API endpoints that uh, this service has and what business application this service is servicing? So there might be the same database that might be servicing multiple business applications, right? So you get to see all of them listed here, rather than so. So if if you if you figure out that, for example, this discount service is suffering, you get to see all of the business applications that are also dependent on it, and you get to see what the health of that is, right? And then you get to see the platform, the Kubernetes platform. Uh, is is any of those pods or namespaces uh, or containers that are also suffering with its health? Or if we have an infrastructure layer, right? So you, which uh, container it is, or which process it is, which host it is, and their metrics. So wouldn't it be nice to see these dependencies across? And you would also want to see, because of that automatically created dependency map, we also would have, ideally, the upstream and downstream services views. So what is being affected? by this service being um, performing badly and what other services might be uh, downstream uh, that might be causing these issues in the first place, right? So here we see the upstream services are all in yellow and we see a downstream service, the database in red, which might be indicating that it might be the root cause, right? But we don't know yet, right? And even better would be if we could get some sort of tooling that could tell us the root cause immediately, wouldn't that be awesome, right? Rather than us doing all the investigation, you know, clicking and drilling down into these, if 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 the tool itself can, um, you know, neatly stitch things together in a sequence of events in the uh, order of occurring, and then lead us to the root cause. Now here we see the discount service. That was the one that we're, we were investigating it. But in close proximity, in close time proximity to it, we also see that the micro, uh, the MSSQL service was suffering. And just prior to that, we also see an abnormal termination of the MySQL service, which, might, which is, in this case, is a root cause, right? Wouldn't that be awesome? So there are tools that allow you to do this, that stitch all of those uh, components together, the traces, the logs, and the metrics to give you that end-to-end uh, -end, 
uh, visibility, right? Um, just looking at the, the chat. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, visibility is nice. Okay, cool, cool. Thank you for the comments. Um, let me go back to the poll. So I am looking into the other issues that you're having. So another person said, uh, Amit said, uh, the, one of the, the key challenges that he has is diverse set of platform technologies coming up with SLIs for each of them, right? Uh, answering the question, is my platform healthy? So a good thing about this kind of tooling is that you have the ability to give a health score. So if we go back um, to this page here. So to, to give a health score. So I'm not quite sure if you guys are uh, aware of Aptex. Uh, are you, have you heard of something called Aptex? Um, just Google it and see. Uh, Aptex is, is, a, is a methodology. It's, it's not um, a, any, any vendor-specific uh, uh, terminology. But it is a kind of a metric that you derive uh, from a certain calculation, and there's an Aptex uh, organization um, somewhere that, that defines it, and most of or some of the APM vendors use it. And Aptex gives you an overall health indicator. So none of the, the technical, you know, the latency, the error rate, not, none of that, but gives you a score from zero to one of how healthy your application is, right? And that is simple enough for an executive like uh, Amit or um, uh, maybe Jamie to, to get a sense of, is my application healthy? Now, my role as a manager or an application owner is not to investigate why it is not healthy. It's somebody you know, down, down the chain, an SRE or a DevOps engineer. Um, th th it's their problem, right? So I am responsible for the overall health and uptime of the uh, application, but there are other people who would investigate into it. So I can then reach out to them and say, hey, there's something wrong with my application. Can you look into this? And then, of course, as the application owner, you can uh, assist them to, to gather up. And, and with a tool like, like what I'm showing you now, it will be easy to get to the root cause, thereby reducing the mean time to identification, right? And by reducing the mean time to identification, we reduce the overall downtime because we can get to and fix the issue uh, as soon as possible. Moving on, uh, wouldn't it be nice if this diagram that, that you saw earlier was created automatically for you? So you don't have to stitch these services together and say, hey, um, this shipping uh, module talks to my cities module, this discount module talks to my uh, payment module and my MySQL database, um, blah, 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 and you know, having to do that manually. Wouldn't it be nice you define the services you want and it discovers the dependencies and creates a map for you, right? And there are tools which do that. And there are tools that tell you what the issue is. And you can see, this is something that I, I believe that you guys should be looking at when you're, when you're choosing an observability uh, product, uh, regardless of what it is, if it's open source or, or if it's vendor-based. You need to know even if 1% of your users or customers are impacted, right? Now, most of the tools out there, they do something called um, sampling of traces. Now, what that means is they don't give you metrics across all of the collected, or they don't, for, for, uh, in the first place, they don't collect all of the traces. They collect a sample of traces. You know, some, some have um, a certain algorithms that they use, uh, let's say tail-based or header-based, um, some of their statistical algorithms that they use, they capture a subset of the traces. And what happens when you do that is you miss out on certain traces entirely. And one of those traces might be, let's say, I'm just making up a story here. So some of them might be uh, your platinum grade customers. And they might be complaining and calling the call center and saying the application is impacted and you're looking at the dashboard and saying, uh, no, we don't detect anything. It's not our problem, right? And there's a high chance of that happening because of those algorithms that do not capture 100%. And I'll show you actually what I mean here. If you, if you focus on this area, I'm not quite sure how clear this is, 
but it shows that 50th percentile of users or the requests that come through to this application or this particular service has a pretty good, um, you know, pr pretty good response time, uh, eight milliseconds. But 10% uh, is experiencing two second delay and 1% of customers is experiencing 2.4 seconds of delay or, or latency, right? So if your APM tool or your observability tool is doing sampling, you might not even see this spike at all, right? So you need to ask your vendor, do you, that is the importance of no sampling. And there are very few vendors that are out there who do no sampling. And some of them uh, do not sample, but they don't retain the data for too long. So their data retention is like, you know, a couple of minutes, but by the time you, you get to the analysis phase, that, that time window has surpassed. So you don't have that detail when you go into investigate. So keep those in, in mind. And the sudden increase in, so that's, that's what is meant by here. So, so the tool identifies there's a sudden increase in latency for the fraction of requests. It's not all of the requests, like what, what we saw before in the previous use case, uh, but here it's a fraction of use, uh, fraction of requests. And here again, uh, when we drill down into that, when we click on that um, uh, incident here, if we click on here, it will take you to uh, the detail where it also uh, puts all of these uh, total of 16 uh, events together. Um, and it, it, it again leads to the same root cause, the, uh, the database uh, recalling uh, most number of errors. If you click on this, and if you go into the database view, you will get to see that there's the, the process uh, or the database process was terminated uh, abruptly, right? So, um, so, the, so to, to, to summarize those two points, right? So first of all, you need to have a single aggregation tool. So, so you might do this in multiple ways. You have to have, if you're having disparate collectors, like logs separately, metrics separately, traces separately, you need to have an overarching um, tool that correlates between the two. Now, the problem with that is when you have that kind of an architecture, it is not going to be a real-time tool. So you will have some sort of latency. So um, I'm just going to go back to my slide and bring your attention to this one. If I may, give me a second. Hold on. If I go to slide number, yeah, this one. So when you have that kind of an architecture where you have siloed um, logs, metrics, and traces, and you have an overarching aggregation layer at the top, your mean time to detection is going to increase, right? Why? Because there's a latency added to it because that, that top layer will take some time to stitch the traces and metrics and logs together. So while you're trying to reduce the MTTI, your MTTD increases, right? Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. And let me go back to focus on some of the other, other questions that, or other concerns that you had. Uh, do, does that answer your question, Mahesh and uh, Amit? Or do you need more clarification? I think Mahesh was saying there that uh, it, it's a balance between sampling, sampling data and cost associated with capturing all right. that. Right. So that is correct. Correct, Mahesh. So, so that is one of the, the biggest concerns customers have um, or, or, or you know, SREs have. Okay. Are we compromising on performance? Because most of these collectors are agents that reside on production servers, right? So the whole idea of the whole idea is, is of observability is not not having a, an additional overhead where you are throttling the the application itself. So the the observability solution should not be the impeding factor for the application performance, right? So that is the biggest big, big concern. So so to mitigate that, there are efficiencies from the uh, agent side where you can add, uh, where we do minimal aggregation minimal um, massaging of data on the agent side 
And all what we would do is just forward the collected logs. That's that's all. So some of the APM vendors, what they do is that sampling algorithm actually runs on the agent. So that in turn, and also you know you add the compression, you add the um, you know the the, the channel uh, SSL encryption. All of those become um, overheads to the application process itself. So uh, that's why you need a certain architecture where you you do not overburden the uh, the application server or the application services, where you have a minimalistic, uh, bare bone minimum uh, um, agent and processes that that come with the agent where it does not spend a whole amount of CPU cycles or memory to do additional calculations. All it does is collect forward, collect forward. At most, buffer maybe, right? So on top of that, uh, for network efficiency, if you're thinking of, you know, when we capture all of these traces, depending on how busy the, the application component is, it will also create a lot of network traffic. Um, yes and no. Uh, it also depends on how your application architecture is. Now, if, it, if your application is a monolith, yes, it might, because all of your components, right, are in one server. The database, the application, the, 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 uh, the web front, and if it's a web application. All of it resides in one server, so you have all of those traces build up, uh, build up, and then you have a big pipe that goes out of that server, which is going to have all of that information, right? So in that case, yes, but if it's a monolith, it's easier to troubleshoot. Everything is is one place. But in modern day, I I don't know. I'm just I'm just asking you guys. Do any one of you maintain or responsible for a monolithic application? I'm just curious. Um, Nazum, I will answer your question in a moment. Right? Um, he's asking about which tool did you use in your demo? So uh, the screenshots that I showed. Right. I knew we'd have to shoehorn that one out of you at some point. They're asking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, I will mention that towards the end. So mostly microservices, says Mahesh. Uh, yes, a monolith. Man, wow. You do. Wow. Okay. Um, somebody answered the question for me. Uh, monolith app. Okay. So some of you do have monolithic applications, right? Now, for monolithic applications, yes, I agree. There might be um, an impact on the network utilization because all of those traces are generated from it. We can, um, we can use certain compression algorithms well, out of the box uh, or inherent to the, the solution where we compress the traffic that goes out, right? So compression is one to mitigate that. And uh, the other one is uh, depending on how busy it is, we, we can See what are the what what do you monitor? Now out of the box, if it does, uh, let's say for example, um, now I, I think it's a good good time to disclose what the uh, solution that I'm talking about is. It it is like most of you guessed is it's Instana. So Instana is a um, observability platform that you know those are the screenshots that I showed you. It discovers uh, the services that are running on the host that we install it on automatically so so when we install the agent it discovers you know what's running on it are there databases are there application um, uh, services like you know um, jboss server or um, a, some sort of a, a web uh, web sphere application something running on it so it, it identifies what's running on the uh, server itself it's a vm or a physical server and then it tries to monitor those now what we could do is if you have those kind of monolithic applications, we don't want to monitor everything, right? So you can filter on what we monitor. Now that's a manual configuration on top of what is out of the box. So out of the box, it, it monitors everything. So we could do that to mitigate that problem, right? Does that answer your question? Uh, I think the question was from Mahesh. So so the my answer to the question is, um, the there is, a certain factor in designing of the agent by Instana where they've thought about that. So Instana is, is purpose-built for uh, modern-day application architectures, uh, not monoliths, uh, for microservices-based architectures, uh, cloud-based technologies. 
So it, 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 it captures that, but it works well with Monolith. We also monitor, if for your information, we also monitor applications that are running on mainframe, for example, right? Um, and uh, some of those applications that are running in mainframe or, or not, not necessarily mainframe, but let's say for example, uh, power series, um, they are monolithic applications in banks that we monitor. Um, so they're, they're working fine. Um, so there's a question, how do we do service assurance for hybrid applications? Yes. Now, it's a good question, on-prem and in cloud. Now, most of the, um, this is not a claim that Instana makes, but there are other uh, third-party um, observability products that do support um, both um, cloud-based and, um, uh, and on-prem deployments. Now, if you go for a, let's say, for example, you run most of your applications in AWS and you have some com application components that are residing on-prem for, let's say, efficiency or, or economic reasons. I don't know what it is, but those um, cloud-hosted applications talk to the on-prem application. So it's a hybrid model. That's, what, that's the meaning of the hybrid application. In such scenarios, you don't have end-to-end -end visibility from the observability platform that your cloud vendor offers, or AWS, or Azure, or Google offers. So in that case, you have to go for a third-party observability tool. Um, I'm not going to mention any specific um, competition, uh, but there are other comp competitive um, um, observability tools that, that could do this, right? And some of the observability vendors do support uh, their, their service as a SaaS-based offering, and very few offer on-prem as well. So they, you could deploy the, the analytical backend on your own server on-prem. So this is important for uh, customers who work in for governments, for defense, um, for, cost, for, for organizations who offer services to government and defense because of the, the nature of the business, right? So they don't want the data to be, uh, even in a metadata form, they don't want it to go out to third parties' eyes. So in that case, you have to deploy it on-prem. So, so you, you have to choose a vendor that, has that flexibility, but most of the vendors out there do um, support a hybrid application model. Um, so it's not a big problem. You just have to just go out there and explore. If you if you can't find any, come back to me for Instana. Uh, so that was the question that was posted on questions. Um, just going back to the polls, just to make sure I've not missed out on some of it. And there was another question uh, or another challenge uh, posted by Lang, right? So he asked the question, uh, he, his concern was code changes causing partial outages, keeping CICD um, time slow for devs, bug feedback to the team is ad hoc, right? Now, this is, this is a really, really interesting topic where we address it. Um, I don't think I have time to do a demo of it, but um, to give you a gist of it, choose an observability tool that has a feedback from CI/CD services. So in Instana, we have a, I'm not quite sure if I can show this to you. If it was captured in one of the, um, just see if I have a screenshot of that. I might be able to show it to you. Okay, here we go. I do have a screenshot of that. Let me show it to you. And it would be easier for you to, experience this. Uh, let me share my screen. Window. Right. Do you see this? Um, I'm not quite sure. Um, let me know when you can see my screen. Got it. Yep. Do you see this marker here? This is, I'm not quite sure whether it's clear or not, but it's a, like a spaceship kind of an icon. This icon represents a software release. Now, what that means is in the in the metrics itself, in that same view, you get to see when a release was done. So you get the idea whether this issue that we are facing right now is caused by that release. Now, if this marker was close to these high error rate calls and latency spikes, then we could think, oh, maybe that was caused by the release because it is immediately afterwards, right? Um, if it was not anywhere near, then we know it would most likely be not, right? So that kind of um, feedback is crucial and not many AP, uh, uh, observability solutions out there do that. 
And what we can also do is we we can search by uh, so from the time drop down here, we can search for releases and the timelines and see if there are issues that are within those time frames of the release. So I can see, okay, release number 117. Uh, I want to make sure that the system has no issues during that period. So I can search by and drop down and click on release 117 and see if there are how, how the system is performing during that release. Right? So that's that's one way of doing it. Um, and I'm just uh, going back to the questions again. Um, so bug, bug fixes and feedback. So we, we also offer, um, code level detail when we are doing trace, uh, level, uh, analysis. We have insight into, uh, the code level detail as to, okay, what, um, code was throwing this exception. And we also have a, something that, that we could give back to the developers um on how to improve the efficiency of their code we have something called uh, application profiling so what that does is we get to the code level and say where most of the cpu cycles or memory or wait time is spent in your code so you might have um, a module that has about 500 different lines of code right and so where or which module or which function is is having the most wait time for processing or which one is spending more CPU cycles. So we can highlight that in a flame graph and give that back to the developers or as feedback so they could use that to improve their code. So that's also one other thing. Um, um, I've got a quick, quick question yep. with your robots, right? Yep. Um, how there was somebody, I forget the person's name, I do apologize, uh, was asking about how, uh, monitoring of serverless stuff. Yes. Yeah. So, so how, do we, how do we do that? Obviously, you're waking up the functions that are going to cost money. So how do you how do you monitor them? That that's a good question. That's a very good question. So serverless um, um, serverless environments, you know, like the likes of uh, Lambda function or Azure functions, or um, where you get Fargate for those kind of scenarios where you can't deploy an agent. How do you monitor those? So we have to do instrumentation on that. Uh, so we have to incorporate the um, observability code into your actual code that runs there. And then it would do the instrumentation by itself to send the traces to Instana backend. So we can't deploy um, an agent. So obviously when you, when you don't own the infrastructure, there is no point in uh, uh, monitoring the infrastructure or there is no infrastructure level logs to collect. All of the logs, the application logs and traces come from the code instrumentation itself. Um, so that, that's how we do it. And that's how Instana does it. Uh, other APM uh, solutions out there have to do a lot of manual instrumentation where they need to actually inject the code into uh, the, the, the line of code sections. Like say, for example, if you have a call out, uh, if you have a, a API that, that receives data or sends out data, uh, you would have to encapsulate that with the instrumentation code by yourself. But for us, it's just a matter of importing some um, some code snippets. So it's just, you, you import certain functions and then after importing that, the that code itself discovers your, um, your outgoing and incoming API code, and then it would monitor those for call outs or call uh, information coming in. Good question. Does that answer the question? Yes, so it's not using like an agent to pull, it's using code snippets to push. Yes, correct, correct. When it's instantiated, it pushes the, the metrics or whatever is required. Correct, correct. Okay. Um, I'm going through the questions again. So Nikki Crawford, uh, using your R tools is to quick, sorry, using R tools to quickly work out which dependencies are causing issues, configuring alerts to noisy okay noisy alerts that, so that's another one right so i think i addressed this with that alert that i showed you earlier that scenario right we in instana create individual um, uh, um alerts you can generate individual alerts for issues like say for example a, a process going down or a memory spike 
or, or let's say, for example, um, a certain exception thrown by an application. So that can be an alert. But what happens is then it becomes an alert storm all of a sudden, right? So if, if there's interdependent modules, interdependent services, one failure can trigger a whole bunch of issues. So that what we do with Insana is we clubber most of those together into an incident where we generate one alert and that incident would have uh, all of the related issues within that. So that saves your time. And also in the way that we arrange those issues in chronological order, you can get to the root cause faster, right? I hope that answers. Um, another one says the challenge is reducing the response or sorry, reduce the time res time response or maybe response time for services, application speed and troubleshooting. Yeah, so so as I so I think I can sum up um, just looking at all the other questions. Uh, okay, I, I'll just I'll just grab this question because it's different to the other ones. Uh, this is from Tivito, uh, D, D, Tivo, sorry, D Vito, sorry, um, engaging teams to establish proper real SLOs and adjust them accordingly so we don't create noise. All right now within Instana we have a we have the capability of creating custom dashboards as well, apart from the the out of the box dashboards that I showed you. So all of the dashboards that I showed you in this in this um, presentation deck as screenshots are out of the box. We can create custom dashboards as well. Within the custom dashboard, we have you know the app decks widget, and also we have an SLO SLI widget. Now what you can do is you can create um, an SLO based on a service level indicator SLI, and you can set error budgets. You can say okay. Within this week, our error budget, let's say, you know, error, error budget, or let's say, for example, uh, you know, delay or response time, you can have a budget for that and say it, it should not exceed, exceed this level. That's what we are aiming at. And it tracks whether we are within that budget or not. So you can actually, as a service owner or, or the SRE who's responsible for the services that constitutes that business application, show the business owner or the uh, application owner, okay, we are within the budget that we established. This is real. And, and, and that is based on the metrics that are collected from the platform itself. It's not made up. So you don't create that out of, out of the air. It's based on technical metrics and it gives you that indication, yes, we have met our SLA. Uh, and, and based on the SLO, you met the SLA, right? Um, Okay, one more question. Uh, my central resource scheduler fails to continuously reach the cluster node for pulling the metrics due to network issues in IoT devices. Decentralizing the scheduler is perhaps the solution. All right, I'm not an expert. See, see, I, I told you, I'm not going to lie about my my uh, my expertise. I'm not an IoT expert, um, so I don't know really because in IoT world the network protocols are very different to that of ITs, right? You have, um, they call it Zigbee, you have LoRaWAN. I know this terminology because I've worked on one IoT project and that's it, that's as far as my, my knowledge goes. So I'm not overly confident in asking that question regarding IoT, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, are there any more questions that I've, I've missed? I've got one last question for you. Madura? Yes. Um, so yeah, just, just before we, we wrap up. So obviously there is not one person who is who is on the call tonight that would not be elevated to superhero if they can implement all the observability tooling under the sun. Mm -hmm. But it, normally there's an element of cost and all the rest of that stuff. Like if you want to put together like an all-in-one thing, which is going to take away lots of stress for you and make your boss out to be a bit of a hero. My question is, how, how do you build like a business case at, at an elementary level? How, how do you build like a business case, you know, for um, the purchase or the procurement of an, an observability system? So it, 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 it's based on those, um, those metrics that we talked about in the in the first slight right mean time to detection mean time to identification 
if you can reduce those and and show to the business that we can reduce as a result of that we can reduce the overall downtime that is the business case for you because we we are not earning any money to the business by doing this we are just saving the costs and potential revenue loss so it, it depends on what sort of business that you are part of right so if it's if your application is an uh, a front front facing application that it, it provides some services for your business that earn some revenue so we are potentially um stopping oh sorry avoiding those kind of revenue losses now if it's an internal service what that means is it it creates internal efficiencies now if without a certain certain application if your if a certain uh, user groups cannot function for example if their job cannot be done without that application that means that the productivity is lost so what we are doing is we are making them more productive we are potentially stopping an outage that would cause a a a an uh, let's say shutdown of a certain department if i can put it like that so that is what we offer right so you have to build the business case depending on uh, what type of kind of an organization you are in uh, it can be revenue based it can be efficiency based you have to pick, you know pick based on what your organization is I suppose, like speaking to the pro- product managers and seeing if they've got any idea of you know the cost of degradation to a service, and and and, and also uh, I'll give you another point. Now this is this is something um, that I I realized during the the pandemic period. Right, we had a, a, a big amount of um, people who who've been snatched out of companies by other companies because the the, the demand for IT knowledge was so much. This is more prevalent prevalent in the security domain rather than the operations but in the operations as well so we had people that were lost to teams and uh you know being snatched by other companies and and all of a sudden you lose that institution knowledge right institution knowledge of okay if somebody knew how this application worked and he's suddenly gone and we have no way of knowing how to troubleshoot this anymore and his intuition knowledge of okay this this kind of thing occurs from time to time and this is the remedy it was not um you know um, collected in a cent- central point so this is when an auto discovery features like auto discovery of services automatic creation of uh, the application service map those kind of things come in handy because the tool does it for you so if somebody i'm not saying you are you guys are going to be <laughs> yeah, not worth anymore but uh, i mean it makes your life easier right what is your primary objective objective is to 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 keep the applications up and running right so i don't think anyone here who's attending this loves troubleshooting uh, i i if you put your hand up and say you love troubleshooting i don't believe you i don't believe you i've been in those shoes it's a horrible thing you could do right but we we love creating new applications right we love creating new services um but but there's a feeling of of achievement once you come out of that war room saying yes it's not my service or it's not my database it's not the network that, that to, to get that uh, sense of um, achievement you you spend what hours like you know we we saw during the polls right uh, it takes you know in the in the in most majority of cases hours for for to come out of uh, those kind of downtimes right so all of that time you are either in a war room physically or virtually on on zoom trying to figure out where the problem is so get about the troubleshooting part leave it to the tool and you know help the let the let the tool help you and and focus on more important things is my my I, I know that I'll need to drag this out of you again but how can people actually have a little play with this tool if they want to go off and have a little play with it is a like a, a free free trial thing or something or how, how yeah. people engage and have a look yeah so if you want to try it on your own uh, and and by the way somebody asked if this is an IBM product yes it's an IBM acquisition um uh, you can go on to google and google instana and there's a a 14 day trial a self trial for you to try it out yourself no strings attached um there might be someone <laughs> calling you and bugging you and asking do you need any assistance because you signed up for it with your email but apart from that yeah, we're not going to hold you for anything now if you need an assisted uh, uh, a tech assisted 
um, sales trial. Uh, we can do that, but that needs to be, you know, like myself, I would get involved, I'll call you, we'll have to, you know, look at the use cases, we have to build some sort of a POC scope, and then we will do a sales trial. So that is, you know, we can you know, do it for, you know, one month um, and, and show you the value of Instana. So for that, reach out to me, please. Um, there was one, if I, if I might have two more minutes, there's one question by Mahesh uh, saying, Instead of using Instana agent to, to do auto instrumentation, we can do instrumentation with Otel metrics based on the logs to Instana, right? I have a whole uh, presentation deck on open telemetry, but I'm not going to put all of that and you know take your time with it. My simple answer to that is open telemetry works with applications that you built, right? Say if you if you do the coding, I'd say you build a Java app or Node.js app. It could instrument that perfectly, no problem. But what about the other stuff? What about the databases? What about the middleware? What about the uh, you know the WebSphere server? Uh, what about the JBoss server? What about those components that talk to each other? Right, the platform itself, Kubernetes. Who's going to monitor that? So, Open Telemetry will cover any application code that you write and build the application with uh, within that runtime, but it would not cover the other components which is also part of the overall business application that's to start with and there are other reasons why i would not use uh, application uh, sorry uh, otel because you know like um, i'm not gonna run down otel it's really promising um, it, it removes the vendor locking um, of you know like say for example if it, it creates this vendor agnostic um, approach to more observing um, custom built applications right so where you don't have to re-instrument when you change the agent. And it, it, you know, that's what it does. But it's, it's awesome at doing that. But it doesn't give you the end-to-end -end visibility for a business application. It's not realistic. Uh, but I would encourage you to go down that line. And I, and I would encourage you to explore open telemetry. We support open telemetry uh, natively. So we don't have to have our agent. You can send um, the, the traces and logs directly to Instana backend, either SaaS or on-prem. Uh, we, we support that. Um, but great question, Mahesh. Uh, if you if you want, just reach out to me. Uh, I, we can have a discussion on open telemetry on its own for one hour. Just a, a very very quick one again. Th thank you very much to Caroline from Tech Dees for helping pull all this together. Madura, you're awesome. I, I'll never say that's your face, otherwise you get big headed and you know. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that that was a great balance between you know generic sort of best best practice, yeah. uh, you know, based in you know with a few te teasing intros you know into your product, you know, which looks pretty cool anyway. And it's good to know that people can have a bit of a free trial with that one anyway, and reach out to you if they've got um, any questions. Yep. Have and I thanks to Benjamin as well. It was part of their team. Uh, thank you for you know helping out answer some of the questions. Um, and we're sorry, you know, if we went uh, a little over, but, you know, again, we, we, we lack time and uh, things just are um, just started to get uh, really good. Um, and then so, again, let us know if you want a part two. But again, Madura, Caroline, Benjamin, thank you so much. Thank you to everybody who joined us tonight. Uh, Madura, would you like to say something to the audience before we end the session? Yeah, th thank you very much for attending. And also, I can see all or most of you were, were there throughout the session and, um, um, and, and hanging in there. And, and even when we went over time, you were there and you were uh, there throughout. And I, I really appreciate that. And that's not something I'm used to with webinars. People fall out uh, somewhere <laughs> in between. So uh, thank you for staying behind. And um, uh, please register for that giveaway for, for the merchandise. Um, I think uh, Amanda shared the link again. If, if, if you didn't catch it, Amanda, if you could share that link again.